We've been installing a lot of MSD distributors in the cars that we build here at VATV. This one is a, a, a pro billet unit, um, kind of a traditional design with an electronic pickup. And we also install the digital e-curve distributor, which replaces all this with a circuit board. And we've learned that the e-curve is a little tricky to set up because you have to think backwards. So I thought we would take just a minute to show a little bit about what ignition timing is and then uh, give you some pointers on how to properly set up an e-curve in a car so that it does what you want it to do, right? So when you look at what ignition timing really is in its most basic form, all you're trying to do is light the spark off at the right time. And because an engine has uh, the ability to go from a lower RPM at idle up to a high RPM, that uh, timing has to change over the RPM. And when we talk about the ignition of the flame front, okay, all we're talking about is if, if my fist is the piston and, and uh, you know, this is our spark plug up here, when that piston comes up into the combustion chamber, you want that spark to light off because that's what pushes the piston down, turns the crank, turns into motion, car goes down the road. And however many milliseconds it takes to light that spark off is constant, okay? That's the only thing that doesn't change because you cannot speed up a flame. And, you know, to give you an example, good old fashioned match, no matter what I do, when I light this thing off, that flame takes that much time to flare up and burn down. We'll do it one more time. Same exact amount of time. Now, sure, you could put this in a pure oxygen environment or something crazy like that, but that's not what's inside your engine. So knowing that the flame speed never changes, okay, what we do is we make that spark happen sooner so that when it's flared up at its most powerful point, when that flame kernel is the strongest, it's always gonna be at the right time to push that piston down. If it happens too soon, it will fight the piston coming up, and if it happens too late, the piston's already down and then it lights off. Either one of those are out of time and engine doesn't make any power, okay? So the way a traditional distributor works, like this one, it uses a centrifugal device. You can see some springs up here, got some weights here, and then underneath is a, a stop bushing underneath here. And all this really does is, as the distributor spins, okay, uh, the centrifugal force will start to push these weights apart the faster it goes. And when these weights move outward, you can see the top of the distributor actually moves a little bit, and that's living normally underneath this rotor and when that moves it changes the rotor position in relation to the cap and makes that spark happen earlier and earlier the faster this spins. It's pretty simple. This is measured with a timing light. You connect it to the number one cylinder, you look at your harmonic balancer, the flashing of the timing indicator will show you at what degree before top dead center your spark is happening. So at idle it might be at 10 degrees before top dead center. When you speed the engine up and rev it to 6,000, it might be 35 or 36 degrees before so that there's enough time for that flame to propagate. Okay, you with me? All right, so the challenge is to know how much time to advance that spark, and every engine's different. And I'll tell you right now, people will say, well, I've got a big block Chevy, and I got these cylinder heads and this camshaft, and, and what should it be? The only real way to know is to start setting timing, setting your initial at, uh, you know, basically start with the stock manufacturer's recommendation and then set the advance, the total, uh, total timing advance at whatever the factor recommends again and drive the car and see if it makes power. And if it starts detonating or if it's down on power, then you start moving in either direction to try and figure that out. And you have to measure it with a timing light. There's no way somebody can tell you arbitrarily what the right number should be. They'll get you close, but you really gotta test it, okay? So having said all that, when we look at uh, uh, how to set the timing, again, with a traditional distributor, what you do is you stab this thing in the car and you start it up and at idle, okay, you set it to your initial setting, which you know might be 10 on some cars, it might be 20 on others, it might be 15, you know, it's whatever the car is gonna want, it's gonna want. And then you put the light on the car and you rev the thing up and you watch that timing indicator change till it reaches its maximum amount of advance. And the way you control the maximum amount of advance, there, there's two things you gotta watch out for. One is how fast it gets to the full advance 
and the other one is how far that advance really is. And that's where this little bushing comes in. You can see by this little bolt or nut head here on the bottom of this distributor head, that actually will stop this thing from turning at a certain uh, degree. So if it's, you know, advancing too far, say if you measure it and it's got 40 degrees and you want it to have 35, you put a larger bushing in here and it'll stop this from spinning all the way to 40 degrees. Now, the initial advance, you, don't, you set by turning the distributor. And the curve is how much advance is, uh, is introduced as the RPM changes. So for example, a 50, what they call like a, a 10 degree curve would mean it starts at initial timing and it's gonna advance 10 degrees over its RPM and then stop. A 15 degree curve would advance 15 degrees, etc. Okay, now the digital E-curve basically works in function kind of backwards from what a traditional uh, centrifugal distributor will do. And here's what I mean by that. The E-curve, you set the total advance that you want at idle, not at full RPM, set it at idle. So if you want 36 degrees of total timing, you set the E-curve at idle to that number. And the other thing you have to do is before you set it, you have to turn the screws so that the distributor is what they call locked out and it will not introduce any advance at all. And the combination is one and seven on the two pots. And that will make sure the distributor does not introduce any advance at all. With it locked out, you set it at idle to what your maximum advance should be, okay? Maybe it's 36, maybe it's 34, whatever is gonna be good for your engine. At that point, you then pick the curve on the chart and dial the dials in to match what curve you want. You can choose from a 10 degree advance curve, a 15 degree, a 20, even a 25, or you can keep it locked out if your engine's happy with that. And what the E-curve distributor will do is it will retard the timing down to, say you got a 10 degree advance curve and you got it set at 36 initial, with the E-curve, when you put the curve into it, it will set it at 26 at idle and then ramp up to the 36. And then the different curves allow the ramping up to happen at different rates. So the, the steep curves, you get your advance at a lower RPM than a more shallow curve. Again, these are tuning things you'll have to go through to figure out exactly what your car wants. But the most important thing to remember is that you lock that thing out and you set your advance, your total advance, at idle and then put the curve in and then double check it with the timing light and you'll be able to see your initial timing, you rev the thing up and you'll see timing change to go to whatever the advance is that you set when it was at idle. And that's the big difference. So the E-curve is very cool because you can then tune it without taking it apart, without taking these springs out and changing this bushing because usually when you pop these out you drop them and you get aggravated. But with the E-curve, all you do is pop the cap, turn the screws, you also have a built-in rev limiter, which is a nice feature, and uh, it makes tuning a little bit easier. But again, just remember, you got to set total advance at idle, and then the curve will work it backwards. Got it? Hope so.